Hey everybody, I'm Hamza Krumza and today I'm going to be showing you an exciting build for Bulgarians in 1v1s or as flank and team games. While most civs can execute a nice man at arms tower rush, Bulgarians can do it quicker and more cost effectively. Hope you enjoy! So in a game I played recently trying to execute the 20 elephants to 20 minutes strategy, I ran into an opponent that tower rushed me as Bulgarians and a bit earlier than I expected. Now I don't think that Luki is the first person to ever do a Bulgarian tower rush, but recently I think it has become a much more viable strategy, mostly due to the fact that stirrups was buffed on the latest patch. The Castle Age technology stirrups for Bulgarians allows their unique unit and their light cavalry to attack 33% faster, but with the most recent update they've included the entire knight line to this bonus. This makes Bulgarians have the best knights and cavaliers in the entire game. So what makes a Bulgarian men at arms into tower rush so strong? Well, their strength is tied to one of their bonuses that allows their militia line to be upgraded automatically and for free when they age up. That means you save 100 food and 40 gold on the men at arms upgrade, as well as 100 wood since you don't have to build a gold mining camp early on to actually afford the upgrade. Also, you save 40 seconds of time that it would have taken you to actually upgrade the Militia into Man at Arms in the Feudal Age, since it is automatic. If you get through a Tower Rush successfully, it will usually mean that you will either have enough stone for a castle once you hit Castle Age, or you have extended the game long enough for you to survive into Late Castle. Now, usually you would want to do this as Spanish since you want the unique unit, but here we just want the castle for the unique technology. And if you don't want to do that, then you can still go into Create Post. So, I think this build can still be strong if executed properly and can put your opponent in a really tough position. That being said, let's hop right into it. Alright, and let's get started. First things first, we're going to build our two houses right off the bat and we're going to build next to town center. Send one or two sheep underneath the town center and start getting to scouting with our sheep here. So we're going to look around for our four sheep that are out there in the wilderness and need to be claimed by us. And we're going to send the first 2 through 7 population onto our sheep just to make sure that we have enough food income to support our villager production. So we're looking around and we find 2 of the sheep there. Okay, perfect. Also, it looks like both of our boars are at the front of our base. That's definitely not ideal. So in this case, I don't do it, or I don't think I want to do it here, but you could take your boards just a little bit early just because they are at the front or if you think that you're going to be lame but that's generally not the case in a standard game we're going to also send our 8 through 11 population onto the wood line to make sure that we have enough wood for the uh, uh, mill as well as the barracks later on so let's go build that lumber camp and just kind of with the sheep, kind of the sheep okay Okay, so one of the things while we have a little bit of time here before the next uh, actual instruction is kind of want to talk about what you do while you're tower rushing. So since tower rushing is kind of a big commitment and you're going to have four people on stone as well as four people forward or four villagers forward, you kind of have a lot of dead time in your economy since you have eight villagers essentially not working on any of your essential resources or your vital resources to start so you're gonna be a little bit strained for eco so i wouldn't recommend building palisades right off the bat and i would recommend actually trying to stay as lean as possible that being said we're going to send our 12th villager over to the boar and actually go grab it and we're going to pull it in here we're also going to have our 13th villager go and build two houses and then we're going to send him or her over to berries. We're going to do a cute little trick here where we're actually going to shift click onto the boar so once they finish up eating that sheep they will go directly over to the boar. Okay perfect. Make sure the boar stays lowered, get stuck there. Couldn't have asked for a better boar killer. So what we're going to do next is we're going to send our 14 through 17 population over to the berries and we murdered a sheep. Oh god, that's the most annoying thing ever. Alright, well, we'll just deal with it and we will adjust in order to compensate for the fact that we are reckless sheep slaughterers. And we go and we, we're gonna build the mill, send the villager from house over to berries, 
And at this point, we found pretty much all of our vital resources, right? Like we found our gold, we found our boars, we found the stone. And what we need to do now actually is go forward to scout our opponent's base and recognize where the best place to tower rush would be. So, for example, if they have a back gold or if they have, um, you know, back wood lines or all of their resources are actually in the back of their base, then I wouldn't actually recommend doing a tower rush in general. But since this is a build order video, I'm going to do it anyways, regardless of what I see here. So we're going to lower the boar with the 17th through 18th population. And with our 19th population villager, we're actually going to go and build a barracks. So we're building this barracks because we want to be able to produce our militia before we actually get the mana arm upgrade in feudal. And we actually want to be prepared there to have our militia at their base before they even um, reach the feudal age there. So that way we can harass and you know do a lot of damage immediately. So we're gonna send our 21st villager, or we're gonna send the 20th villager or 20th population onto the board, as well as our 21st villager to go and gather some gold. And we will send them to gold and to gather the 10 that they need. And then we will send the last villager, or rather the barracks villager, over to stone. Perfect. Build a stone camp, or a stone mining camp. And we should be able to click feudal, and we're going to click feudal. So what I actually like to do here, once I actually do click up to feudal, I'm actually going to slaughter two of the sheep that are next to the boar there. And the reason why is I want to be able to get enough food to produce for our militia. We're also going to want to send over four people to the stone mining camp so that we can maintain the tower production. And once we have enough food to produce one militia, we are then going to send four of our villagers forward. Okay, so let's sort out who the high HP villagers are. Okay, perfect. And we are going to start our march towards the enemy base here. Awesome. So we're going to try to get all three militia pumped out here. We're going to build a house up there just to make sure that our villagers are rallying towards the correct point. Let's also go and try and scout where we can be most effective, where the wood line is, and where his berries are, and where the gold is. Now, I'm not the best tower rusher in the world from a technical standpoint. I would actually say I'm very bad at doing it, which is I don't why I don't traditionally do this in any of my rank 1v1s or anything like that, but I've played it against it enough to actually know what is going to hurt you, um, especially come feudal. So, once we actually hit feudal here, we're going to build the towers on their resources. And what you can also do with this is because you have mana arms immediately, you can actually build a tower in their faces. So you don't have to worry about building a tower, you know, as a safety tower first and then kind of, you know, springboarding into that. No, I would recommend actually just, you know, building the tower straight in their face, maybe on the wood line itself, go in with mana arms, be really annoying, harass and they will have to retreat from that wood line, just like he's doing now. Perfect. Also, you might have saw it on the screen there, but you're going to want to research double bit axe. You can also research uh, horse collar if you have a little bit of downtime in between. But we're going to be doing that. And also, once your sheep expire, I would send them over to berries and have them gather food there, just so that you can keep up your villager production. And this is already great for us, right? he's forced to respond to this tower rush with all of these villagers. Now, I would say that a higher elo player wouldn't actually send this many villagers to go and fight this tower. In fact, they would probably just build counter towers, but you will get people who will respond as extreme as this to, you know, keep your pressure off. We're also raiding the gold there with our scout, and we're just gonna keep threatening to build towers here. And it's okay, right? Because he's idling all of these villagers to go and deal with us, and we're only idling four of ours to go and look at the, or to only, I didn't four of ours to actually go and build things, or build the towers. So we recognize that he's still gonna be persistent about coming back to his wood lines, so we're gonna build our tower here, and then we're gonna build a tower forward, potentially to actually go and get his berries and his gold, and that's kind of how you wanna play it. Now from here, the build is very flexible, right? So you can go for a lot of different things, I would recommend going fast castle, but you can commit here and you can go for 
you know, um, skirmishers if you want, if he's building some archers to come harass you. You would also could send a spear forward because if they're going scouts then they may be able to clean up your army or your mana arms at least rather easily. There's a lot of different things you can do here and because of that I actually don't want to harp too much on the build order from this point. I would just kind of want you to, you know, be able to adapt and build the the rest of this as you go. So just build farms every time you get 60 wood. Make sure you don't get house pops or house capped like I just did. And um, at some point you're gonna want to send people over to your gold, and then you should be set. Now, one thing I would recommend actually is when you're done building towers, which should be around you know 650 stone, which would be enough for a castle. Or if you're going for cray posts, a little bit less, then I would move those people from your stone over to gold or a similar resource. But that being said, um, that's all I have for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I actually apologize for the delay on this video since I feel like it came out a little bit late. I'm trying to get one video every week, and uh, you know work was just really busy this week, so I wasn't able to get as much or as uh, in depth that I would have liked here. But if you have any suggestions on how we can kind of improve this build, or if you know of anyone who has uh, really good footage of someone pulling this off a little bit more effectively than myself, please send it my way. I'll do my best to actually incorporate that, include edits in the comments and in the descriptions. And uh, hopefully this build order will serve you all well uh, in the days to come. But that being said, um, Discord is down in the description. If you want to check it out, let me know. Uh, by joining the Discord, I guess, and let me know if you have any suggestions. But have a great rest of your day.